Thank you very much for that uh, warm welcome. The Right Honorable Prime Minister Rugunda, the Honorable Minister Bahati, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute honor, inspiration, and privilege being among you all here today. It is rare for someone to come into a hall with so much human intelligence to talk about artificial intelligence. So thank you for having me. Just to make a few statements on uh, a few points that the Honorable Minister made before I joined you on stage. The first is tuberculosis used to take six minutes to diagnose uh, in the UAE. With artificial intelligence, it is diagnosed in less than one second, and it's already deployed. We have already tried it on 55,000 cases in the UAE, and now we're deploying it across hospitals in the country, and also deploying it to other countries across the world. So we are realizing the potential of artificial intelligence and trying to use this technology for good. Not use it to displace jobs, but use it to save lives. The second, is that, yes, indeed, we do have interesting ministerial portfolios, but the fact is it all comes with a focus on outcome. What does it mean for the UAE? What does it mean for the future generations? And sometimes some of these interesting ideas lead to ministerial posts that create a lot of positive impact. Our Minister of Youth was appointed at the age of 22 years old. She was the youngest minister in the world when she was appointed. There is no better place to talk about the fourth industrial revolution and to talk about the future than in the continent that represents the potential of humanity. Africa was the birthplace of mankind and is also the future of humanity and economy. And there is no better place to talk about this than Uganda, one of the youngest countries on earth. And as we know, youth are the future. So every single one of you is going to create the future. I would like to start by going back in history. I would like to take you through a journey of the four industrial revolutions that we are in and that we were in in the past. The first industrial revolution, as you all know, was a revolution to augment our abilities as humans. We used the steam engine to give ourselves capabilities that we did not imagine. We were able to produce more in factories. We were able to move longer distances through locomotive and do more in terms of production by just having one technology, which is the steam engine. The second industrial revolution with electricity gave us all abilities that the kings and emperors of the past used to dream of. Every single one of you, with the click of a single button, can change darkness into light. Every single one of you, with the click of a button, can speak to anyone, anywhere in your country or anywhere on earth. And every single one of you, with the click of a button, can access the knowledge of humanity through the internet. These abilities were seen as mythical and magical abilities that kings and emperors would go to war for. Today, we take them for granted because of the industrial revolutions that brought them to us. Now, what does the fourth industrial revolution bring to us? That's the question that many conferences, many individuals try to address. The first is the fact that there is unbelievable potential. With artificial intelligence, we will be able to diagnose disease anywhere on Earth, whether you are in Uganda or Los Angeles, whether you are in Dubai or Tokyo, at very high level of accuracy and precision. We will be able to save lives like no other time in history. With blockchain, we will be able to securely and transparently offer government services, have elections, and include the people in our decisions as governments. And with virtual reality and augmented reality, we will be able to see other worlds and open the imaginations of the generations that are with us today. All of these abilities come with a price. The price is that these technologies will be shaped by the people who shape them. If you are an importer of this technology, you will receive it as it is, and you will be left out of the future. But 
if you are the creator of this technology, you will be able to shape not just the future of Africa, but the future of our species. The fourth industrial revolution is a race. It's a race between different countries. It's a race between different nations. It's a race that pits us together. And in all races, there are certain advantages that either individuals, companies, or countries have. Now, when asking about the fourth industrial revolution, some individuals or some government officials ask, what are the parameters that will make us succeed in this revolution? The first is the fact that legacy systems hinder your ability to use the fourth industrial revolution technologies. The second is that a dynamic and young population is going to allow you to leapfrog in the fourth industrial revolution. And the third, with enlightened leadership and with agile governments, you will be able to adopt technologies faster than anyone else. With these factors, we are able to determine that Africa is perfectly situated, not just to lead the fourth industrial revolution, but to export it to the rest of the world. That leadership will come with one factor, and one factor alone. It's human capability, it's the development of human capital, it's in the investment of every single one of us. If we invest in the humans, we will be able to leapfrog, we will be able to benefit, we will be able to create solutions that are not just like the ones that you saw today, but solutions that we can't even imagine. We will see people from around the world flying into Africa to see the solutions that are made here and exported to their countries. That is the vision that I hope we are able to realize in the future cycles of this conference. And that's a vision that is not too far-fetched. We are just at the beginning of this revolution. We are at the first second of the first minute of the first hour of the first day of this revolution. So today is the day if you're going to start. And if you're not going to start today, it's already too late. Now, I would also like to say that there's an Arabic proverb that says that the hand that's on top is always better than the receiving hand. The giving hand is always more powerful than the receiving one. And that is as true in the fourth industrial revolution as it was in the previous three revolutions. It means that if we want to be countries with opportunity, we need to create. If we want the future, we need to be the ones that shape it. If we want to help, we need to help ourselves first. Governments play a role, but every single individual has a responsibility to shape the future, whether it's in his or her home, in his or her company, in his or her government entity, or in his or her university. All of you are responsible to shape the future of this continent. It starts with you, and governments will follow. I would like to touch upon some of the initiatives that we've done in the UAE as I was told to discuss artificial intelligence and why the UAE has gone into this path. The UAE is a relatively young country. We have individuals probably in this room that are older than the UAE is as a country. So we understand that our country was able to achieve a lot in a relatively short amount of time. That came with vision. In the early 2000s, in the year 2002, our leadership put a very ambitious program. Our president said that we need to move from a traditional paper-based government to an electronic government. We need to use computers. We need to deploy it. And many individuals thought that this was a far-fetched idea. They said that computers might not be the future. The internet might not continue to be around and that this idea might not stay. Eight years later, in 2008, His Highness, the President, wanted us to move from an electronic government to an internet and mobile-based government, to have access to government services on the mobile phone. This was also seen as a cutting-edge and very far future-oriented idea. And in 2000, 
and 15, we moved to becoming a smart government. It is very important, if you want to be part of the future, for you to try to foresee the future and then work diligently and work for years to achieve it. So, for governments to be able to be part of the future, we need to plan first and then execute. And we need to not be afraid of making mistakes. In the UAE, our mission was to deploy artificial intelligence with one motto, which is building a responsible artificial intelligence nation, brain. The idea is artificial intelligence is a tool. Yes, it's a tool that can be used for good and can be used for bad, but if responsible development of artificial intelligence is the key for using artificial intelligence, then we will ensure that this technology builds a better future for everyone, the youth, the current generation, and the generations to come. We're also deploying artificial intelligence in sectors that we understand we can leapfrog in, and at the same time don't have controversies. We're deploying artificial intelligence in healthcare diagnostics. We're deploying artificial intelligence in infrastructure development. And we're also deploying artificial intelligence in minerals and resources mining in oil and gas. Now, what does that mean for Africa? It means that we can work together. We can try to share best practices. We can see what you're developing and what you're deploying in Africa and learn from it and deploy it in the UAE. We can also bring the rest of the world to the table, try to say that this is what we have. Come and tell us how can we deploy it in Uganda? How can we deploy it in the UAE? And what would that mean for citizens? And finally, I'd like to say that it also means that the UAE is a testbed and is the ground for your greatest ideas. If you have any ideas that you would like to deploy in the UAE, it is our job to realize your dreams. We can realize your dreams in the UAE, and hopefully, with our collaboration with the Right Honorable Prime Minister and the government of Uganda, help also realize it in Uganda. Thank you very much for having me.